what's coming with me is what I leave here. And I am just so blessed to have an audience like you that I can serve and that, um, that my experiences haven't meant nothing. That my experiences haven't meant nothing. I think that's what we all look for is like, we hope in the moment, like, or we think in the moment, this is for nothing. Why am I going through this? What's the point? Dealing with anxiety is something that I deal with. And I know you deal with it too. And it manifests in all different kinds of ways for me. And when I get anxious, and let me tell you, uh, tell me in the comments, because first of all, I love your comments. This isn't just me talking to a screen anymore. I read yours. I learn from you. Some of you write paragraphs. I'm learning things from your experience. You're making me a better person by what I read from you. And reading something from Google or from some, uh, I don't know, Psychology Today paper, that's not even close to the same. Let me just totally backtrack and do something totally different since I'm on the topic. Your comments seem so pure to me. They seem so pure. Because you have nothing to hide. You have nothing to hide. There's no persona added to you to be like, I got to act like a tough guy in front of Scott when I comment. There's impurity of the tough guy and the toxic masculinity and, oh my gosh, okay, I better make sure I look like this and I'm, I'm seen this way. Better change my uh, YouTube comment photo because then I better, I'm going to put a picture of me with big muscles. I'm going to add that in. No, it's, it's your, you show up who you are, where you're at. That's how you show up. And that's pure to me. And I, and I wonder if you see purity in that for you and dealing with anxiety and, and low points and depression, I'll even say is sometimes we think that the contamination has entered our bodies, that we've been contaminated. And don't we feel contaminated when we're depressed? Don't we feel contaminated when we're dealing with anxiety? Don't we feel contaminated when we have a panic attack because our blood pressure is through the roof. Our cortisol is through the roof. And we're, our, our, our respiratory rate is up, down, up, down, in, out, in, out. We feel like we're dying. Something must have come in to cause this. I must be contaminated. Something must be wrong with me. I used to be a Brita filtered glass. And now I got dog shit all in me. And, you know, that's one way to look at it for sure. But as you know, in every single video... We take a concept and I'm going to flip it for us and let's work through it. And usually I work through it. And then at the very end, there's an aha moment. So everyone has to work with me. Um, so think about purity. And I want you to go around your town, walk down the street, wherever you live, go into a city. It's hard to find impurity in nature, isn't it? But when, when people get a hold of things, then we just piss on it right? We just pee on everything. So in the city, I'm looking at a building across from me and there's graffiti there. Once was a, a seemingly a, a pure brick building, then get some ugly stuff on it. I see a woman down at the bottom and from my perspective, she's injected impurity into her lips. Your lips were fine before and now they're ducky duckies. Now you got huge lips and no white woman should have lips that big. From my perspective, the adjustment cheekbones, the jawline that's been altered, the Botox and the eyebrows and the forehead so nothing moves. From my perspective, it seems impure because I'm just into a, a natural quote unquote beauty. I'm not attracted to that. So I see that as impure. I see the garbage on the streets here. Do you ever see garbage on the sidewalks where you are? Like that's impurity. It's contamination. It's adulteration. Where's the purity? Now let's take it a, let's take it a little bit further. A friend of mine just mentioned that, you know, we're attracted to purity in a way, but we see it, we see impurity everywhere. And we, when we see purity, we automatically like are attracted to it. We know what it is. And you know what I believe it is? Everything we're eating, 
Everything we're eating, everything we're seeing, the billboards, the trailers for the next Marvel garbage, and it's all the same. It's the same trailers every time. EA Sports is now putting fucking ads in their video games. Netflix is cheaper, but there's ads every three seconds. The impurity is everywhere. So when you catch someone or something that is pure, you know what it is. You know it. You feel it. And you know what you feel? You sense that there's nothing being sold to you. There's no agenda behind the interaction. There's no sale. When you meet a person who's pure, it doesn't mean that they don't make mistakes. It means that they're not using you for something. They're pure at heart. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. My Muslim friends, my Buddhist friends, my Hindu friends, you know we throw around the word God a lot, but we all have some similar sense of what this this um, uh, this this sentence is spoken by Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. For they shall see love. If you are pure in heart, if you feel that you want to extend purity and show people that you're pure, it doesn't mean that you are sinless. It doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean that you put on a mask of perfection and tell everybody that's who you are. It means just as in the comments, you show up as you are and you don't try to sell shit. You don't try to be somebody you're not. You are who you are, and there is no agenda to you. The pureness of your heart is love. You extend love to others, and what is love is willing the good of the other with no sense of agenda. It's a sacrifice to see the good in somebody else without asking anything in return. You don't love to say, okay, if I love you, you better love me back. That's not how it works. You fall in love without permission of either party. You fall into love. You don't tiptoe into it. When you fall, you fall in. And the word in, think about it. Woo, we're getting spicy. And I don't plan these, it just comes. So bear with me. When I'm in a pool, when I was in the pool, we had an above ground pool. It's what my parents could afford. And man, it made the summers the best. Just a splash in the above ground pool. So blessed to have a tank of water. You know what I mean? Just so blessed to have a little free willy dome there for us to jump in. And when I'm in the water, you're surrounded. And I would do that. If you saw that documentary on HBO about Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods would, would scuba dive. And the reason he loved scuba diving is because the fish didn't even know who he was. And that's the way he could get away from it all. And in a sense, without sounding dramatic, I love to go under the water and just hold my breath as long as I can and just be under and be in it and be surrounded by it. There's something so special about that, about being fully in something, immersed in something, where everywhere you move, you touch the water, right? Everywhere you move your head, you feel the friction, you feel the pull, and you feel the weightlessness. You're in it totally. You feel weightless in that water. And just when we fall in love, man, is there some levity. We feel weightless in love, the oxytocin. We feel less pain. We feel less rigid. Oh my gosh, I feel lighter. And I emanate that light to others. And when we're pure in heart, when we're pure in heart, there's no choice but to be that because you're in it. There's no choice but to be love because you're in it. Here's the secret to all of you who deal with mental illness like yours truly. I do not talk out of my anus. I talk out of my mouth from experience and I'm with you and I'm with you. And if you're in a moment of wanting to quit, Hear me now, there's somebody watching right now and you're in a moment that you're just like, enough, man, I'm done. And you're saying, I'm so tired. 
I'm so tired. You don't lack purity at all. You are more, more pure now than you have been. You are so pure right now and purity can be in a moment of suffering and hold on. Hold on to that purity and let that purity be the love within you. I know it's hard to love yourself right now. I know it's hard to even extend love, but you being in the situation you're in, you're fully who you are in this moment. You're someone struggling straight up. You're not trying to hide it from the YouTube comments. You're not trying to hide it from anybody right now. Be true to yourself right now as you are. You're not contaminated. You're not contaminated. You're still so pure at heart. Can I tell you something? The most loving people I've ever met in my entire life, the those who ha are so pure in heart have been through the hardest times. And if this time is really hard for you, know that the purity that you will spread to others, the love that you will have in your heart when you get through this, not if, there's no if, there's a when, Oh my Godness, your light will shine so far that I don't care where you are in the world, your light will shine right through my condo windows into here in Toronto. It'll spread through the world. And the world wants that and the world needs that because I see impurity everywhere and so do you. And you're the solution to that. So hang on, hang on. Get the help that you need if it's there. Reach out if you need it. Get some help if you need it. Because you're in a process of continually, we all are, washing away, moving through, and becoming this, this light and becoming pure of heart so then we see love and we can be love to other people. And I swear to you, the people that have been through the hardest times that I've met, that's where I'm like, it's, it's purity. It's, it's just, you're pure. There's no infomercial here. You don't want my money. What do you mean? You don't want any, what do you mean? No, I just want to be your friend, Scott. You're a good person. Oh my God. Like what? Don't I have to do something for you? Don't I have to prove something to you? Don't you need something from me? Mm-mm. No. You as you. You as you. As a person with intrinsic value. As humans have value. As if you believe. As you were created in the image of God. Of all that is love. If you were created in love. Then the love is there for you. To release. For you to be. For you to share. If you can't do it right now. It's okay. But man, when you get through this, when you get through this, your light to others will just shine. And as you walk down the street, people will see you and they be, they'll be automatically attracted to this positive and loving and pure heart that you have. Because life is simple now. It was about love the whole time. It's about loving myself, being gentle with myself, being compassionate with myself, being pure of heart, being in love. Hmm. So if you're struggling and when you do struggle and when, when I struggle, I do my best not to feel like I'm in this process of adulteration. It doesn't reverse itself, right? It doesn't reverse itself. We're constantly in the process of filtration. We're always moving forward. The Brita filter doesn't back up and then we become dirtier again. Mm, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. I, I, I don't know. Personally, I just feel like we're constantly moving forward 
in this cycle of purification, moving forward and forward and forward and forward, closer and closer and closer to God, being more pure at heart, more pure at heart. That's the way you choose. And that's the way I want to see it too. I want to keep being filtered so I can continue to offer my love. Uh, so I continue to be good to people. So I don't have to be angry when I don't need to be angry. So I don't flip off the guy next to me when he cuts me off. So I don't respond to a hate comment even though I really want to. I just, I just love that purity. And let's keep talking for a second, okay? A friend of mine, Jess, told me this. It's like, you sense the purity because there's so much garbage today. As I said, the, the food we eat and stuff we see in the advertisements and all this bullshit. And she said, it's like eating cotton candy constantly. And you feel good for a second. You feel good. It's like, oh my gosh, the sweetness. Oh, it just melts. What is this? And you keep eating it. You keep eating it. And then all of a sudden you're sick. You're like, oh, I felt good for a second. And now I'm just garbage. Now I got inflammation in the body and I feel anxious because of all the sugar. My gut feels like it's rotting. And then I got either diarrhea or constipation, but there's no way a smooth log is coming out from that baby. Now, when we have food that nourishes the body, good food. Now, compared to cotton candy, anything's good food, okay? But let's say we have some broccoli it, we have some, uh, some, a lot of people from India watching. I know like chickpeas and lentils is, is, is a pretty good thing there. And rice and, and a lot of turmeric or turmeric, however you pronounce it. And, and, you know, for us in Canada, you get a nice bunch of, what do we have today? St Ontario strawberries coming out. And then we're going to have apples in the fall and just pure stuff that the food is what it is right there. And it satiates you. And it purifies. And the insoluble fiber just, just cleans us out. And you don't get sick of these foods. Notice that you don't get sick of things that are good for you. But you get sick of things that are very impure. I really get sick of my phone. I literally feel nauseous when I've looked at my phone for too long. I literally get nauseous. I get nauseous when I watch too much TV. But I can't get sick of the woods. I can't get sick of something pure. The woods are always there and there's not a day that's going to go by where it's going to make me terribly anxious when I'm in the woods, when I look at a tree. What do you find that's pure in your life? And where is it within you? Where in your heart is there just purity? Uh, where do you want to share it? Where do you think it comes from? The pure in heart is such a, an awesome way to say it. And just think of those lines, blessed are the pure in heart. When you think of that, do you picture someone? Do you picture Christ? Do you picture um, a, a God that, that, that you um, pray to or a God that you worship? Someone that you know. Something. And when you struggle... It's a purification. It's not a contamination. It's nothing you did wrong. It's nothing you did wrong. And hold on, because man, oh man, as you are now, you're still spreading purity based on how honest you are with yourself and other people. You saying that I'm struggling with depression right now, Scott, in the comments, I see that as purity. I see that as your soul speaking. I see that as you seeking help and, and seeking help from the most pure spot within you, a part of you that really wants to go forward, a part of you that wants to keep going, a part of you that wants to really see tomorrow. And that's purity for me. I hope that's purity for you. So if you're struggling, show, show us your purity in the comments. Show how, how pure you are at heart by letting me know and letting everybody know how you're doing. If you're doing great, who you see and what you see as pure in heart. I'd like to thank you all so much for your time. And if this was a little too godly for you, I hope I didn't go too far into a specific uh, Christian lens. 
uh, but I hope that the adulteration process and and purification and we keep getting more pure as we continue more, get to know more people, learn more about ourselves, learn more about others, and we just keep going. And we keep learning. And you keep inspiring people with the light that you shine from uh, your whole being. That was fun, huh? That was fun. That was a fun one. Oh, oh. Now what I'm going to do... <laughs> Man, do I love what I do. I love talking about this stuff. I really do. And uh, the module for neuroscience this uh, month and a half is the psychology and neuroscience of affective disorders. So I love combining the spiritual with the psychological and then I'm going to bring in science for everybody. And in the future... Please join the email list. Please get in touch with me so you can see what else is coming. You know, the eight-week program we're putting together, the Conquer Anxiety course that's still out there. You can email me about that. Um, I, I am going to love meshing all of these together. And my hope is, my genuine hope, what would mean a lot to me, but I know I can't ask this for you or from you, is I hope that I'm relaying a message selfishly that is pure, um, that I don't want anything from anybody. I'm here because I have been through some tough times. I still go through some tough times. I know the human experience is a tough one. It's a tough road. And I think about death a lot. And I know that there is no wallet coming with me. And there's no MasterCard or Visa coming with me. And my mansion, if I ever get one, which I don't want, it's, that's not coming with me and the Ferrari's not coming and what's coming with me is what I leave here. And I am just so blessed to have an audience like you that I can serve and that, um, that my experiences haven't meant nothing. That my experiences haven't meant nothing. I think that's what we all look for is like, we hope in the moment, like, or we think in the moment, this is for nothing. Why am I going through this? What's the point? And um, I am so blessed to have people who are struggling <laughs> see me and this can be useful. And plus, I don't want anybody to struggle more than they have to. I know it's inevitable being a person. I'm just glad I can be of service. So thank you very much for listening. And God bless you all. And if you do not believe in God, keep, keep going. Uh, there is love out there for you. Stay strong. You got this. Take care.